Just follow the road. You'll know where it goes. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 16 of Supernatural Season 5. This is Dark Side of the Moon. This is an episode I've been looking forward to because I remember having fond memories of this episode when it aired. I kind of had a good time watching it again when I did a rerun back in like 2013. So this was the first time I've seen this episode in near on seven years and I still like the concept of it. But yes, there is this hollowness to the idea that you're just reliving these memories. It's a kind of an interesting concept, just the idea of taking what we know something as heaven and then just turning it a little bit like not something major but still within the means of the production value that they can do it without having to be heavy effect or anything like that's what i i love about this one when they're listening a knock knock on heaven's door and they're doing the fireworks i, I think that's one of the most heartfelt moments that supernatural's had in a while it's that moment that is the catalyst to how the episode ends because that's the last bit of brief happiness and hope that Dean has before it is absolutely shattered and not just by what Joshua says to them but by also seeing that Sam's favorite memories are all about separation. Dean's feeling jealous while his favorite memories are with Sam Sam's favorite memories are don't have anything to do with him. It's that selfless selfishness in him that he wishes that it, something was different. And it's kind of a contradiction considering what he was doing at the beginning of the show, right? That he was thinking that Sam and Dean should be separate, but then Sam is the one who wants to put them back together to work together, so to work against Lucifer. So that element shows Dean just breaking his last hope especially with how the episode ends but going through the episode itself I do like the oddity elements that they did this is probably the closest to anything David Lynch that this show ever got and I will admit it is because the script is written by Andrew Dabb and David Laughlin they do a very cool very simplistic but very intriguing means of having them work through heaven by following the road at first it's driving at first then it's walking but then they're looking for a road inside a house and it's this old little track that, this toy track that dean would play with and he does it and then all of a sudden they're in a different room i liked that the only maybe effect that i thought was a little bit hammy is when they go outside through another door and they go out to the street where sam left for stanford and they do that quick around with the camera and they go like 180 around them. I, I kind of thought that was a little silly, but that's it. That's the that's the cheesiest camera element that's done in this episode. I love when Castiel is talking to them through the TV. It gives me so many Alan Wake vibes. It's nuts. Dark Side of the Moon has a very intriguing concept throughout the entirety of the episode. Reliving these moments that these characters have had, we get to learn a little bit more about their past. It's when Zachariah finds them that things get a little bit hectic, it get a little bit uh, out of control where they're running away from him and he's got some pretty darn good jokes at this point and then he's able to manipulate their mother, the memory version of their, mummer, of their mother. We see him showing that he's become a joke now, like people feared him up in heaven and now he's starting to become the office clown. The lighting in this scene is pretty cool, we see a lot of green, kind of green with envy, green with uh, malice uh, uh, reflected on Zachariah. Well, we already saw at the beginning of the season that he's willing to do what it has to be done to do so, but then Joshua arrives, and I really like this actor. Um, as far as I know, I think he's retired. He hasn't done anything since 2015. But he comes in and he takes the boys away, and then they go to, I think it's the Botanical Gardens out in Vancouver. I heard about these, Van Dusen Gardens, maybe. I, I might be wrong about it. I know that there is something like this out in Vancouver there's one in Langley as well but it's not this one because this one is dome shaped the fact that they were able to shoot in there is kind of a fucking miracle I think considering the film industry out here but I digress this is probably the part that kind of disappoints me and I think it's meant to disappoint you but more so I think it's the simplicity of what is said that disappoints me Joshua has a message from God because he says God's living on earth he doesn't care about anything going on and he tells them to back off. He's like, you know what, stop trying to find him. He's not going to appear. 
you guys have to do what you have to do. It disappoints me, but it's also the point of the episode because that reflects onto Dean, that the literal creator of all doesn't want to have to do anything. Their last effort, their last ditch effort wants nothing to do with them. It's crushing, not only for them, but also for Castiel when they go back. Oh wait, the part that I forgot um, is Ash appears. Ash uh, helps them hide from Zachariah. Uh, and I thought that was really cool. This is kind of cameo from him, and he somehow still has a computer doing computer nerd shit up in heaven. I thought that was great. And him just talking about meeting other people, just hopping through dreams. I like that Ash had a good cameo in it. But then going back to the end of the episode, after Castiel learns the truth, he looks up, he's like, you son of a bitch, I believe. And Castiel's broken. He flies off, and then Dean takes the amulet, stands over that bucket, and Sam is just heartbroken when he watches him drop it in because this is a family memento. Because not only does that mean that he's throwing away what was supposedly an idea, a, a, an item that could find God, but it's a personal connection between Sam and Dean. Dark Side of the Moon is a very personal episode. There's not really any action. I think actually, doesn't it? No one die? Oh, well, technically speaking, the brothers do, but they get, you know, a respawn. But I remember the episode starting off pretty crazy with that with that opening them just getting shot i'm like oh shit they're dying again uh, clearly the promo before it just them how many times have you guys died anyway was kind of alluding to this <laughs> it was still a shock so with a really good script some pretty decent directing and a lot of personal moments i can definitely say that dark side of the moon is one of the more deeper meaning the philosophical episodes of the show so in the end i'm going to give it a six out of seven it's a very intriguing concept it's a very intriguing episode very thought out it's a really good script from laughlin and, and dab i'm not going to deny that um they've had two real good bangers in this season and the next one from them is hammer of the gods so we all know that's a good episode too, so I'm very excited to look forward to that one. Anyways guys, I asked for your comments about this episode, so let's read those off now. The thought of constantly being stuck in past memories, never seeing anything new, always kind of terrified me. It's an issue I don't think any they ever change. It's just the way it is. Not even the Winchesters can change something on that grand of a scale, considering I thought God was real when I first watched this episode. Gave me a bit of an ex existential crisis. Still does in a way. At first I thought it was actually kind of a cool idea, but then after a while it's like, yeah, you would constantly be stuck in your memories. Eventually you would outlive it. And it's something that The Good Place, if you've ever seen the show The Good Place, I would definitely suggest it. It actually kind of talks about what is an afterlife and a never-ending afterlife and what to do after that. It's pretty good. I would definitely recommend it. This episode is one of the best of the season and it does something with the idea of the afterlife that later visits to heaven, purgatory, and hell struggle to recreate. It turns the focus of the visit not into what heaven is, but who on who the characters are and what their idea of bliss means. The writers do such a good job of turning the focus onto the boys' lives, their relationships, their parents, and their fears and growing insecurity to keep you engaged without straining the budget. It's, sub it's subverting our expectations, but it works. Here we see Zachariah starting to devolve into the madness over the past over his past failures pursuing the boys. At this point he has discarded all pretense and courtesy. He is no longer trying to convince the boys to change their minds. Kripke once said that Kurt Fuller is a very physically imposing person in means of height and posture, intimidating as a villain, you can really feel that in, the, in his last scene. His dialogue in the episode is very well written. Yes, I like how Zachariah is just like done with their bullshit. He is very much on the prowl in this episode. Episode. I always really liked Joshua and I was so disappointed when they brought him back on screen in season 12 just to kill him within 10 seconds. I don't even remember that. <laughs> I'm gonna re go back and rewatch that review I did. It wasn't necessary to bring Ash back, but it feels good to see his character get a happy ending after being abruptly written out in season two. Same with Pamela in season four. I really like their cameos in this uh, episode. I thought that it worked, and it's, it worked in the context. It wasn't just for bringing back sake, it actually helped with the plot. This is a pretty good episode that expands on the lore of Supernatural. The lore is pretty simple. Sam and Dean are killed by hunters who are angry at Sam starting the apocalypse. In heaven, Sam and Dean are told by Castiel to look for Joshua, an angel who talks to God. Meanwhile, the brothers are trying to run away from Zachariah, whose powers are much stronger on his own turf, 
and who still hasn't gotten uh, given up on forcing Dean to say yes to Michael. In heaven, we see some familiar faces, Ash and Pamela, who helped Sam and Dean to find Joshua. Unfortunately, the message from God is grim. God has no intention to help Sam and Dean and Castiel. Then Sam and Dean are brought back to Earth, but this time remembering that the, the heaven is uh, because of God's will. The Heaven and Supernatural is presented as sort of a replay of one's greatest hits in a form of memories and happy places. As Ash explains it, really nice to see his character again here, by the way. There isn't one heaven, there's like a billion heavens, like Disneyland. It's an interesting yet depressing concept that we, social beings at heart, are meant to live out an eternity alone in our own little world when we die. The only nitpick I have with this episode is that I wish we could have seen Ellen and Joe meeting Sam and Dean in Heaven too. That would have been a perfect final goodbye for those two characters as well. Overall, I'll give this episode 6 out of 7. Yeah, I kind of find it odd that Helen and Joe aren't in this episode too, but there is a lot that's happening. This is really their the brothers' journey through heaven, trying to find Joshua, all the while trying to escape Zachariah. It is trying to put some fear and some tension and some danger into this episode, which is very thankful. I loved how bleak and hopeless Dark Side of the Moon ended. I remember thinking it can't get any worse than dying and getting Zachariah on your ass all the time when the episode air, and I guess it can get worse. God was some sort of faith, and it turns into disappointment and losing faith on Cass and Dean's part. Even though the boys are going through the best memories, while it does show their happiest memories, it goes back to Sam having to face family. He's always ran away and wanted out, but it would end with him eventually facing his family. So by the time the episode ends, it's like, why even try and fight back? when they have nothing else to lose and God himself doesn't even think it's his problem. Yeah, actually, I like the bleakness of this episode. I very much enjoy that. We, what's the point at this point? As much as I like Dark Side of the Mood for some reason, seeing such as seeing Ash in heaven and knowing he's cool with it, I was troubled by others. Sam getting pummeled in this episode. How dare he start the apocalypse? How dare he not appreciate that Dean gets the crust off his PB&J? How dare he disrespect Dean and have a heaven that contains some memories that don't worship Dean? Then Dean throws the amulet Sam gave him into the trash as though it, it's as though the episode and Dean are saying to Sam should go to hell. Oh, that's right, he did go to hell. Your point here, Shannon, I think is going to correspond with Nico's. Um, there is a bit of childish kind of activity from Dean in this episode. I think Dean has been so dead set on being Sam's protector that nothing in Sam's happiest memories include Dean, and I, I'll admit I could understand his jealousy of that. And then also just seeing there's no point, uh, it's a bit of a dramatic drop into the bucket I guess you could say, but I still like it, but I can understand where you're coming from here. Dark Side of the Moon is an interesting episode. They both die at the start. It was not what I was expecting. I like that Zachariah was pursuing them, saying, you're on my turf now, boys. I like that he uses their mom against them, so God isn't interesting. If we go on season 15, Logic God is watching with the popcorn. <laughs> Dark Side of the Moon is my fourth favorite episode of this season. It really shows how the boys don't really feel like they belong in heaven or hell. It's an interesting concept that the angels create multiple heavens of memories when righteous souls felt the happiest. For Sam, it's heartbreaking his heaven is made from the memories that don't involve his family, and naturally Dean's happiest memories is with his family. It's one of the re things that really puts into perspective that one man's heaven is another man's hell. Ooh, good one, Joe. The thing that really has stuck with me throughout this episode in the entire show, one is that we see one of Dean's memories that we see John and Mary did not have the perfect marriage that D uh, Sam and Dean made us assume that they had. As D Dean put it, Mary and John had the perfect marriage when Mary died. The second is the concept of how Eric Kripke and the production team characterized God. Rather than making him a hero or a villain, it was a really smart move for, uh, for this season for God to be an observer of free will of the universe more than a delegator of getting things done with the angels. I was one of the fans then not wanting God to have a physical appearance on the show for the sole reason knowing that if they introduced God it's to be another villain that the Winchesters would inevitably have to fight and kill. You and me are in the exact same boat. I was really happy we never saw him for a long time. For a time I could accept God and Supernatural as a lawful neutral character like Death the Horseman because we had a father figure who was characterized by the children 
by his children, and we didn't know whether God was good or bad, and it just ex existed for allowing free will for his creations. It made the situation more heartbreaking for Team Free Will, but the apocalypse looked like it was an inevitable conclusion for humanity, but also made it more satisfying to see Sam and Dean overcame it by their their will and love for each other. Needless to say, when season 11 came around, I knew God and his sister would end up being villains at some point since the main theme of Supernatural is putting family first opposed to literally and figuratively everything. Very good points in here, Joe. Very, very, very good points. The boys go to heaven. Again. Dark Side of the Moon is an interesting episode for me and one I am personally split on. I remember being a bit underwhelmed when finding out that heaven truly, what heaven truly was. Reliving your greatest hits for all eternity would kind of get old after a while, you know. I did always imagine heaven having a kind of euphoria filter so on so uh, on so no matter what you would be happy and feel great but it never is talked about in the show so I guess that's just me thinking too much about it I actually like it in this episode because of how it is applied to the boys where Dean is all about his family and Sam is more about his freedom because the lack of the standard family unit thinking about it I'm curious at if this was at all manipulated by the archangels or God himself to further crush Dean's spirit because that would for sure be good memories Sam could pick from his childhood. The problem I more so have with this episode is that it sets a precedent of showing heaven and hell. In the first five, it's not so bad, but later on, eh, heaven is an office building and hell is standing in line. The hell line I kind of can forgive because it's more used for comedy, and that would probably be the first level of hell, so no fun, but not the worst. But my god, did I hate season eight's heaven office building. Returning characters of Ash and Pamela are always welcome, like how to traverse heaven, and I actually really like Joshua. Being on the brother on the boy's side, not being able to help them really at all. Not to mention the totally awesome opening and closing scenes where the boys get blasted in the chest with shotguns and wake up in the exact spot. I would have liked to see Dean catch up with those hunters at some point in the series. All the actual scenes in heaven are great and either funny or aimed right for the feels. From Dean's I love hugs t-shirt to grown Sam's dinner date to Dean needing an extra few moments with his mom to help cleaning up John's mess with his uh, from a younger age. It's heartbreaking to see at the end of the episode Dean having lost faith in his brother and throwing the necklace in the trash on the way out the door. Everything from uh, from episode 10 onward is meant to drive home the hopeless aspect of fighting Lucifer with this being when Dean is truly broken. All in all, I do really like this episode. I just have a problem for where it was taken later on. The office building of heaven, I always thought that was like the top floor. I think it was again in terms of like reusing sets it's cheaper to reuse sets than try and build new ones and whatnot and use different locations so i kind of got where they were going with the heaven thing especially since heaven was supposed to be an adversary so giving them that office building sure it's a little bit of a cheap means but i do kind of get where they were going for it i haven't seen the heaven room since season 13 i think or 14 whichever was the one where they said heaven was dying and they totally dropped that aspect of the storyline so i guess we'll find out about it later i'll start with the pros i love the concept of for heaven it's extremely unique and thus it stands out from our other representations of it i don't see the multiple heavens as a prison like dean says honestly it's the best way to contain 47 billion souls and of course seeing zachariah is always pleasing i love this villain and how much of a dick he is making fun making us love to hate him however and i don't care if i come across as way too critical this is a dab episode and his usual garbage is here as present the biggest of which is making Don john seem unlikable in order for mary to look good and dean instantly whining about god and comparing him to another deadbeat dad i can't stand this garbage you you have defended dab for not being lazy in the early days of the show but i'm sorry i don't buy it he is not a good writer Almost every bad episode of the Kripke era is him and Bucking, Buck Lemmings. Even this early on, you can see this terrible mentality that he used when writing characters. In order to make a character seem likable, he makes another look more unlikable by comparison, even though it contradicts previous stories. Once again, like Jump the Shark, John comes off as a terrible father and a husband in favor of marrying the boys. Does this remind you of a certain Jack and Chuck storyline? Thought so. 
Even Dean's whiny nature is featured here. Why would I sympathize with Dean when he and Sam are both responsible for the apocalypse? God literally says to them, no, you whiny brat, I'm not gonna clean up your mess. For once in your self-righteous life, understand and accept the responsibility of your actions. Jeremy Carver fought to fix this in his own era, only to see Dad devolve Dean into the exact whiny climb up my high horse brat we see here and in season 13 and onwards. You can even see then that Dab was a terrible writer that he is now. As for the episode itself, I like it, I don't think it's bad, however, those aspects that I mentioned have become increasingly more noticeable and annoying for me upon rewatch. I do admit Dean's uh, nature in this episode is a bit haphazardly. I guess they're really trying to hammer home the whole aspect of him being hopeless. And then your point about Dab using one character to make another character look good, I do I do see that there. I, I don't think he's terrible yet, though. He still has some decent parts uh, in his earlier career with Supernatural, but that's also because he had da David, uh, he had Laughlin on his side as well. And I don't know where you're gonna go when we go to Hammer of the Gods, because that's it, one of his episodes, and that's a flawless episode near on but I can see where you're talking about here and I can definitely see the little dabisms here her here early on Dark Side of the Moon was an interesting episode. It was interesting seeing the happiest moments in Sam and Dean's life in heaven. I'm not surprised that Dab uh, Sam seems fa sees family differently than Dean. Uh, he's right. He didn't need a normal childhood like Dean has had as a child because of what happens to Mary. It's, uh, it was great seeing Ash and Pamela back in this episode. It sucks that they couldn't appear in season 15. And I'm glad that Pamela found peace in heaven. I forgot that they replaced Joshua with another actor in season 12. I wasn't surprised that God would refuse to help Sam and Dean with the apocalypse. I truly felt sorry for Castiel because he had so much faith that his father would help and stop the apocalypse when everyone told him that he wouldn't. And it was sad to see Dean throw the necklace away and uh, that sand gave him into the trash. I do like Castiel's moment in this episode. It's probably one of my favorite bits of this episode as we see Cass's faith break. His own reliance on his father just completely falls apart and I do like that aspect. It's probably one of my favorite bits of this episode. Alright, thank you guys for your comments and now we're going to talk about 99 problems. I just remember... Castiel saying she's a whore and the whole whore Babylon thing. It's going to be a fun episode uh, from what memory serves me, but I guess we'll see. Give me your guys' comments about that episode and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. And then I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.